Hi, I'm Brad. I'm Meg. And welcome to the Millennial Report. Oh my God, it's been a whole week. It's been a whole week. And we're back at it again, yep. as, as some people would say. Yep. Mm -hmm. Some of us have already worked out today. I have not. Have yeah. you? No. Absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. Used any technology? I may have, Brad. Awesome. I, I, I very well may have. Maybe even to book the class I went to this morning. Very interesting. So, you may be a part of the group that we're going to discuss today, which is fitness and the business of fitness. This is something that I've been looking forward to discussing for a very long time, mostly because it's something very applicable mm -hmm. to my own millennial lifestyle. And I do feel like, you know, it's, it's a topic that is constantly being written about, constantly being responded to. I'm a huge fan of, uh, you know, all of the, uh, the technology that comes with it. Absolutely. Um, so I know you had uh, some interesting articles. We have some headlines today that we're going to discuss. The first one is from PricewaterhouseCoopers mm -hmm. and a recent study that they did, a 2016 study on wearable technology. And what this did was it really kind of broke down among several generations where wearable technology is playing a role in several facets of life. Yeah. And we can't have a conversation about the business of fitness without talking about wearing wearable technology. Because fitness is about, you know, your lifestyle, caring for yourself, and your overall health, and I think that, you know, it's a tough thing to measure. You can know how you're feeling, mm -hmm. but, you know, there's also an, an element of competition to it. Certainly. One of the things that this study showed was that millennials are actually leading the overall adoption in wearable technology. Yep. And they're using it a lot for fitness. Yep. How they're using wearable technology. Mm -hmm. And it's largely for the social aspect of it, too. Yeah. You know, the fact that you can use this technology, post your results and, and your improvements mm -hmm. over time, and bring in, you know, your Instagram account, your Facebook uh, profile, right. and post that picture of, you know, you running around the city, mm -hmm. essentially showing how much you've progressed over yep. time. That's one of the huge ways that millennials are really uh, kind of revolutionizing the wearable technology and the, so the sociality of it as right. well. We've come a long way since those gym straps that we used to have to wear. We had pedometers. We had these okay. little little things that you could clip on to the side of your pants. Yeah. Just, it, all it did was count steps, but okay. we would have kind of like we'd keep track in class for a little while. There you go. Yeah. Ours, ours tracked the, you had to like strap it around you. It would keep track of you know, how active you are, your, your heart rate mm -hmm. over the whole yeah. gym class, things like that. I honestly thought that they were just using it to track our whereabouts and well, making sure that, you know, that student that saw this as the opportunity to make a break for yeah. it because we were outside, yeah. you know, didn't do that. And I be guarantee like, oh, yeah, they were big brothering that. He's yeah. down the block, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's what I thought it was. And I was like, okay, all right, you guys are actually tracking things. Cool. We've come a long way since yeah. then. Yeah, in terms of my experience, I actually don't own necessarily an Apple Watch or a Fitbit or, you know, one of the other uh, Garmin, you know, tools that, like, there are for, sure. for tracking. But my mother got a Fitbit for Christmas, mm. and the woman is addicted. And I say that with so much love and so much admiration for your commitment, Mom. <laughs> but, I mean, really and truly, every day she's checking on her iPad, her stats, you know, yeah. checking up, and it's keeping her in check. And then, but also, you know, um, my boyfriend was training for a marathon a little while ago, and yeah. he got a Fitbit just for the training for that. Yeah. And, um, you know, and he got momentarily addicted to it too but I think you know and I think I think it you know you want to do that when you're competing with yourself it's funny that you mentioned Fitbit because there was another headline about them actually They're throwing up these alley-oops <laughs> for me so market watch uh, they reported that Fitbit may add payment capabilities to mm -hmm. their devices so recently um, I, I, they bought the technology um, from coin um, so using that technology yeah. that they purchased and bring being able to bring that into their existing Fitbit fitness mm -hmm. uh, tracking technology you know this now is bringing it that much closer to an Apple watch mm -hmm. and the likes of and so much so that they've actually moved up in the rankings of wearable fitness technology in terms of watches mm -hmm. interesting to see how they integrate that NFC near field communications technology mm -hmm. I know you had some headlines as well one of the things that you know is interesting about in terms of Millennials in our relationship with running is that we're actually the beginning of the end Wow. So, you know, um, there was a Wall Street Journal article that uh, pointed out that, according to Running USA, the number of finishers dropped 9% in 2015. In 2013, 19 million people wow. crossed the finish lines. Uh, last year, it was only 17 million. The larger pool, even, of non-competitive running is, you know, also shrinking, even mm -hmm. among millennials. And um, in the same span, the total number of frequent runners, ages 25 to 34, so, Kay. you know, that's kind of like the heart of the millennials, dropped 19%. Wow. And, you know, runners ages 18 to 24 dropped 22%. About 2.5 million 
less young runners. You know, there's this proliferation of boutique fitness and studio fitness. And um, you know, that's everything from like cycling and CrossFit to Pilates mm -hmm. to yoga to bar, yeah. which is very close I and important to me. Yeah. I can't say the word without without that caveat. And then, you know, also, you know, things like aquatic spinning and rowing classes, you know, that uh, imitate like, you know, rowing in a race. Yeah. So like there's all this competition now to running. And this is, you know, reflected in the success of things like class pass. We are also interested in kind of overall health rather than being pinned as one thing. Certainly. So that we, you know, we can take pride in our overall health and that's what we put into our bodies, but also what we do with them, right. you know, rather than being labeled a runner, a swimmer, a yeah. rower, right. you know, a cycler. So why not be in everything? Yeah. So a I mean, person. when we were talking about wearable technology, I honestly, I'll run with the Nike running app. There and that's go. it, you know, and that's, you know, how I can map my run and things like that. Now, do you share it out afterwards as I well? I don't share it out. No? No, I'm, I am uh, humble okay. about, about how much I run. And I am humble because it's rarely more than, th like, three miles. <laughs> but I'm huffing <laughs> three miles. For, for some people, three miles is still a lot. It so, is a lot. So it's, it I, a lot. I think, with our generation, too, it's, it's about showing improvement as mm -hmm. well. Improvement resounds with people. Yeah. People are very encouraging. Yes. You know, especially, and luckily in the circle I see, you know, from my Facebook feed, people are really happy for other people when they have a good run or a long run that they feel good about. Certainly. I want to hear what you're using as well in terms of either tech, but also soul cycle. I love soul cycle. I've, I've tried other things too, and that was all facilitated through ClassPass again, right. which I will talk about. Okay. Um, but it's a cool experience. It's, you know, you're, it's one of those spin classes. It's high intensity. It's also, you know, they, again, they try to, to have this, like, you know, mantras of self-love and appreciation. Right. And the class itself, you're burning calories. It's a very expensive class to take. It's, it's a, if you're renting shoes, it's like $36 a pop. The way I understand it, because I've never been to a class. So yeah. for someone like me, on the outside looking in, yeah. I see all these people going to Soul Cycle. I'm like, oh my God, it looks like they're having so much fun. Uh, maybe I want to be a part of that, maybe I mm -hmm. don't, but what I do hear uh, is they have classes that are formed around, you know, just Beginners one genre of music. Like oh yeah, yeah, they do. Things like that. That's what gets me going yeah. because it's the thing that you're always, you know, doing when you're working out is you're listening to music. Mm -hmm. Psych 2, mm -hmm. which is also a spin class, um, yeah. and they're very good about emailing me, uh, you know, what the roster is in terms of playlists Ooh. for the week, and that's that's a big seller for me. One of the things that I, I have mentioned, I'll, I'll go into it now, is ClassPass. ClassPass is a, is a very, you know, I think, I think it really solved a lot of problems in the boutique and studio fitness industry. Mm -hmm. And basically, it took care of two problems, consumer boredom sure. and provider waste. So, you know, what it did was it allowed uh, studios to fill empty slots sure. in their classes, and in exchange, the consumer, like myself, when I first moved to the city, and it was still $99 a month for unlimited access to these studios, I could pick and choose studios at any time I had time to yeah. work out right. all across the city. Young, working class, millennial who probably can't afford some of these more expensive boutique studios to experience them, you yeah. know, e maybe at off peak hours, but still, you know, I got yep. to try these classes out. And so, you know, for me it worked very well. Yeah. Huge Pure Bar fan. Yeah. I, yep. uh, I'm there, you know, five, six days a week. Oh, I know. <laughs> she, I, she's like sprinting out of the office like, bye guys, I gotta, gotta go to my class. I gotta go. It's, it's just, it, you know, and it just makes me happy that I found something I enjoy. Yeah. But I don't think I would have found it if I hadn't, you know, used ClassPass at first and explored the different options out there. But the Pure Bar Studio is one that, you know, fits my schedule. Yep. Um, I'm surrounded by peers in the class. There's mirrors in the studio because it's a ballet-based exercise. And That's so, cool. you know, you can look at yourself, and I'm always reminded, I could do this yesterday, I can do it again today, you yeah. know? So there it's you really, you know, it is. It's, it's about competing with yourself and, and, and feeling good about yourself and what you, you spend your time on. Good. Yeah. Soul Cycle as well. Um, yeah. I think we're going to see a lot more guys get into I soul hope cycle. so. I absolutely hope so. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, uh, you know, I've definitely dragged a couple... A couple friends of mine, you okay. know, to, to a class or two with me, and I think uh, I think they, they enjoy it. Yeah. I mean, you, you should go. I haven't tried, but I've I'm, talked I mean, to you about going, and you haven't gone. It, I mean, when they do a Michael Jackson theme one, and I'm sure that they oh do yeah, they everywhere. Do. Yeah. And I'm in. Yeah. Okay. So I just gotta find it. I'll watch the schedule. I need to be like mad cheap. Too, we, we'll so. hold. We'll all hold him to this. Oh gosh. Yeah. Are I'll we gonna Facebook Live from there as well too? We might as well. Facebook Live from Michael Jackson Soul Cycle that Brad goes That'll to. That'll be perfect. Nice. Great. I'm game for it. Oh, I'm game for it if we can find great. it. Lastly, more and more yeah. businesses uh, getting their employees involved. How how are businesses gonna lead that next shift 
um, in fitness. And, and one of the ways I think they're going to do it is you're going to see more East Coast businesses mm -hmm. adapting to um, some of the benefits that West Coast Silicon Valley businesses are giving to their employees through some of these uh, covered classes, mm -hmm. no cost, uh, so that they can get more employees engaged, building those relationships that you need within the office space. I, I definitely have worked out in a room surrounded by people who were there on, on an office outing, mm -hmm. quite frankly. Um, you know, there's a, a, a spin class called Swerve where you can uh, set up teams. Swerve. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's different teams, you know, <laughs> and so like they did it as a team building exercise. Okay. So, you know, I think, it's, I think it's extremely effective. I think, you know, what it, what it does is it says to your employees, you know, like you encourage obviously their, their whole well-being. Yeah. And that, you know, as, as, a, as a firm, you know, you want to go out together and, yeah. and kind of share that. So I think I think it's great. You know, Nasdaq gave us uh, some classes at the beginning of the year. Yeah. You know, when everyone uh, has their New Year's resolutions, uh, we had a couple spin classes that were provided. So that and, and that was awesome. And I went with work people. You there weren't you there. Yeah, maybe next, next time, time around, we'll take yeah, we'll take around. advantage.